Hi everybody, hope you're having a fantastic day. It is a beautiful one here and we are working to add a secondary conventional kiln to our drying arsenal. We've been using a 40 foot insulated, uh, this is actually boxed to a truck, but it's built very well. It's all aluminum and uh, sealed up really, really nicely. What we have in there is some circulating fans and we have a radiator inside this box with hot water flowing through it. It's about 170 to 180 degrees. We cut a hole in the side. Sucks the air from there. And then down here, you can just see the radiator is flowing the hot air. So the hot water flows through the radiator. The air circulates from the chamber through the radiator, heats the wood. At the very other end, there's a little vent that as the heated air travels through that wood, it carries away the moisture and leaves out the end. Simplest, simplest way to dry wood. Probably even simpler than a solar kiln. All right, shut her up, James. We, we gotta keep that heat in there. That's a 40 footer. This is a 53 footer. We've done the same. So this is it from the outside. We just looped it through. So hot water flows through this rad first. Hot water flows through this rad second. Now, because of the temperature of the water and the amount of flow, uh, the degree drop really from here to here is not that much. So these will still operate almost the same. Difference being this is 53 foot. We have the same kind of pull down door. This was also a truck body insulated. They had this already cut out, which was pretty convenient because it, I'm not kidding you, it literally fit this rad. So we just had to add in these uh, wooden plates, but this hole was already here. It's got the hot water flowing through a radiator. So you can see in there all the coils and on the back side there's a fan. So basically hot water flows through it. The fan blows this air. So it's sucking in air right here, coming around behind, coming back through the fan, finally going through all the wood packs. And then in the very end of the kiln here, we're going to have a hole in, the, in there and that will be a vent. So step one on the ceiling, we're adding these two by sixes they're lag bolted right through the uh, ceiling of the container. Then from there, we'll be mounting these fans. Now everything is very expensive these days. These are from a local chicken farmer who uh, raises meat birds. He upgraded to a newer barn and had a bunch of old fans from his, from his, uh, well, from his old barn. So we got some of these on the cheap. In fact, I'm gonna do some bartering, I think. I'm gonna do some sawmilling for them. And we have six of these and they're about 5,000 CFM each. So we're talking 30,000 30, CFM in here, which is pretty sweet. We're gonna get these two by sixes mounted to the ceiling. And uh, very simply, we have two lag bolts going in. James holds it, I climb on top. I got a nut and washer on the top side, silicone it, get it all sealed up. And we're gonna continue on and then we're gonna start hanging the fans. So we've drilled our holes. We've got the bolts sticking through the top. So I'm gonna run up top now. I told him I wasn't gonna film, I was gonna do the bolts right away, but man, look at that view. Inside here, we have the two by six now fully mounted, lag bolted through the entire ceiling, bolted washers on top, all siliconed up, so we shouldn't have any leaks. One thing I noticed, you can go crazy tight with the bolts because on the top side, it's pretty thin and it kind of makes a divot don't want that divot because the divot's gonna like hold water so I was I was careful not to divot it too much and really make sure I did a good job on the silicone um, these are the fans gonna space them evenly six of them will be in here uh, really nice large plastic housing we'll have mounting on the front face as well as uh, to the two by six here and we'll probably add some wood down the sides of them to kind of like make a bit of a frame but we'll see what they're like we did test them all, confirm air direction. Uh, I've definitely hung some fans before and they were blown the wrong way. So I learned my lesson. And uh, obviously these are well used out of a meat bird barn. Very um, harsh environment, I guess you could say. It's got ammonia, it's very acidic. All the chicken poops and the chicken peeps. I'm gonna cut that out. All right, success. The first fan is mounted, worked like a charm. We got it uh, screwed onto the front face and washers and relatively larger screws and on this bottom flange either also uh so it's pretty darn sturdy and in between the fans we're gonna have sheets of plywood that uh you want to have that because you want this 
air to be blowing and then going through the pack of wood and then back up. You don't want it just like blowing here, going in between the fans and coming back. You want all, all the airflow through the lumber. So we do our best to ensure that. Okay, everything is going smoothly. It's about lunchtime. We got all six fans hung. And James is in the shop right now just trimming up some plywood we're gonna put in between. We usually get a lot of turkeys in that field. All right, so we've got the rad fan turned on. Air is flowing, hot air is flowing out of here. So the air from the chamber comes in the top, comes down, goes through the rad, takes the heat away out of the water from the wood boiler. All these circulating fans, I'll turn them on now. And uh, basically all this air is gonna circulate through the lumber as it uh, comes out to this end. And we'll have a vent on this end. And ideally the vent is um, controlled by the amount of humidity in the chamber. So uh, we'll deal with that at a later date. For now, I'm just gonna cut a hole. Uh, I've been very successful with very, very well air dried lumber. Just a small kind of six inch by four inch tall hole here. Works great as a vent. That's really all that's needed. So let's fire these fans on and see how we did. This is it, first time with the circulation fans on. Oh yeah, it's already getting warm in here. 